Hey everyone, Rob here, and we got some updates on some new images. Well, I found that they were new uh, from the European Space Agency. And this is all around the eruption that's been going in Iceland. Now, as we know, the eruption is still ongoing. Everyone's going to the site, uh, hopefully paying attention to the opening hours, which, uh, as I've been talking about a lot, are closing it at night, 6 p.m. It's closed. Um, but for those that are unable to go to Iceland, you know, you're watching this channel, or you're watching some of the live streams, uh, and you can view it through the comfort of your home. And now we have satellite imagery from space, courtesy of the European Space Agency, which makes it possible using satellite technology to monitor the volcanic activity uh, in Iceland. Now, satellites typically carry different instruments that can put together a huge amount of information to better understand uh, in this case, volcanic eruptions. Now we have the Corpus, <laughs> I'm going to say this totally wrong, Copper Nicus Sentinel 2 mission satellite, uh, which is an optical satellite, and it can image smoke plumes, lava flows, mudslides, and ground fissures. And we can see an image that was taken from it uh, on July 11th. Now, this image here, captured by the Sentinel 2, shows the smoke plume coming from the eruption in Iceland on, again, July 11th. And it shows the plume blowing in the southwest direction. Now, the Sentinel-2 is based on, on, on a constellation of two identical satellites, each carrying an innovative, wide, swath, high-resolution, multi-spectral imager with 13 spectral bands. Now, that all sounds um, quite a bit of technology built into those. Now, although the site of this new eruption uh, is popular and it's definitely potentially hazardous. So I've said this many times, new fissures could open without warning and lava can spew unexpected toxic gas, including sulfur dioxide, which can quickly fill the air. And as uh, we've mentioned before, sulfur dioxide can be very harmful to your health, especially when high concentrations in the air. Now, thankfully, sulfur dioxide has a relatively short lifespan due to the various chemical reactions that remove it from the air. It can be oxidized from sulfate aerosols or dissolved in water to create sulfuric acid, which then gets washed out by rain and other pre precipitation. Now, if we take a look, I have another uh, amazing image here, courtesy of the European Space Agency. So if we look at this here, we can see over the course of... Uh, you know, the first couple of days of the eruption. So it would be the 11th, 12th, and 13th. We see the sulfur dioxide levels, uh, which dark red being high levels and then, of course, being lower. Uh, you can see how it's being transported and blown by the wind towards, I guess, Ireland uh, and across, uh, across the ocean. But when sulfur dioxide is transferred into the stratosphere, the behavior changes. And that was one of the things that the European Space Agency has been stressing. Said so in the stratosphere at higher altitudes, there is less atmospheric mixing and chemical reactions are less frequent. Now, as a result of all of this, sulfur dioxide can persist for longer periods of time, from weeks to even months or years, which is, you know, astonishing to me that it's able to do that. Now, atmospheric sensors on satellites identify the gases and aerosols released by the eruption here in Iceland. And they're able to sort of take a look at their wider environmental impact. Now you can see in this animation here, showing the sulfur dioxide concentrations from the eruption, again, July 11, 12, and 13. And this is again captured using data from the Sentinel-5P. So the European Space Agency has a ton of this technology for us to be able to, to really dive deep on the eruption. Now... Sulfur dioxide concentrations across the globe are monitored and can be monitored using this same Sentinel uh, and using a online platform. But using the data from this satellite the pl and platform, it shows the daily sulfur dioxide concentrations coming. Mostly, are all of this is coming from, um, yeah, from volcanic sources, which is uh, which is really something else. So it's something that. Uh, I want to do a quick video. I mean, it's really interesting to see what's going on with regards to uh, the eruption in Iceland and, and the satellite imagery that we have. One thing I do want to show as well, I'm just going to pop it in here, is that live map. And I'll put a link to this so you can see 
we can see here on the 27th of July, we can zoom over into Iceland here, and we can see the concentration of sulfur dioxide in the air. So not quite as uh, amazingly high resolution as it was before, but you can see there is this sort of purple color. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that purple is uh, close to zero, which is pretty nice. But if we look at around the globe, let's zoom out here, we can see that um, Iceland seems to be, oh, there's a little bit over here in the Middle East, but Iceland is uh, one of the few places around the globe that has this concentration of sulfur dioxide. Thankfully, not into the uh, to the deep red colors, because that, that would be bad. But uh, let me, uh, I'll put this in, in the uh, description so you can take a look. You can play around with, as you can see down here towards the bottom, we have a date. So we can play around with those numbers. Uh, yesterday was a good day. And then if we sort of back up through the days, we get a feeling for how it's looking. You can see here on the 25th was a bit stronger of a concentration. Uh, and you can see it went all the way to the westward. So, But I'll put a link into the description. You can play around with this. Uh, and it's really definitely something very cool to take a look at. So that's it for today quick video. You can see everything from space. Thanks to the European Space Agency for having the technology and posting the images that we are able to take a look at. And of course, these tools here to play around with on the sulfur dioxide. So until next time, thank you so much.